Hey, Baron. Baron, are you there? Hey, yeah, I'm here. Oh, Sorry. Okay, cool. Just want to get you on the attendance. Hey, Clemens. Clemens, are you there? What about David? David Baldwin just joined. I'm just trying to get my audio set up. No problem. Bobby, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. And Clemens, are you there yet? I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I can't imagine him not speaking up later. <laughs> Sorry, Doug, did you ask my question? No, no, I just, I just want to make sure you, you, I, you were there, Fabio. OK, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Sorry. OK, and Stanley, are you there? Varun, are you there? Hey, yep. OK, I don't hear Stanley yet. I hate the fact that on Chrome, on a Mac anyway, if you use the certain finger gestures um, to go to like move the, the, the window left and right, if you do it too, too many times and then things, oh, you meant to go back a page. <sighs> yeah. Hey, hey nice. Doc, I made a mistake. I screwed up somebody's name because it wasn't updating correctly. Uh, Baram, I uh, overwrote his first name with my name. Are you sure he doesn't want to go through a rename to do that? <laughs> uh, maybe, but I, it's, uh, I need to adjust it. There you go. Thank you. OK, I'll take care of that. Let's see. Here we go. Good morning. And who's that? Clemens. Oh, Clemens. OK, yeah. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, who else? Uh, Steve, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Okay, and hello. Uh, Ganesh? Yes, I'm here. All right. Uh, let's see. Thomas, are you there? Thomas, are you there? What about Jim Curtis? 
Yes, I'm here. Excellent, thank you. Mark Kingson. Hey, Mark. All right. All right. Orit, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. Alex Debris? Yep, I'm here. All right. Thank you. Uh, who else? Thomas, are you there yet? What about uh, Sean Fieldman? Hi, Feldman. Feldman, sorry. I apologize. It's all good. Uh, let's see, who else can I pick it on? Daniel, you there? Hey, there you go. All right, Austin, you there? Morning, Doug, I'm Morning. here. Excellent, Matt Rakowski. I'm here. All right. Uh, Joe Sherman. Yes, I'm here, good morning. Excellent, good morning. What about Dan Rosanova? Yes, I'm here. All right, so I can spell your name right, there we go. You're on, are you there? Yes. All right. Uh, Dan Barker. I'm here. All right. Uh, that's not everybody. I'm sure I missed somebody. Jurgen. Yeah, hi. Hello. All right. This and, is Rachel. I'm here. Oh, hey, Rachel. Excellent. Let's just get into you. Um, and I'm, this is Sarah. I'm joining by phone. Hey, Sarah. I'll be on Zoom in 15 minutes. Got ran into traffic. Okay. What about um, Viam? Hey, this is Viam here from Oracle. Excellent. Thank you. Let's see. I'm pretty sure I missed somebody. Is Stanley there yet from Oracle? Okay. Is there anybody on the call who's not been starred in the attendee list yet? Hi, this is William from Oracle. From Red Hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, who is that from Red Hat? I'm sorry, who is that who just spoke? William. Oh, William, got it. Okay, thank you. And there was one other person I noticed. Klaus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. And Thomas is here. And Thomas, excellent. Where are you, Thomas? There you are. Got it. All right, let me start sharing my screen since we're going to get started in a sec. Do, 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 do. All right. All right, um, let's see who can I pick on. Ben, are you there? Good morning. Good morning. Um, Chad. I'm here, Doug. Excellent. Thank you. I think that might be everybody. Hey, this is Stan. I'm here as well. Oh, Sorry. excellent. Thank you. Computer okay. uh, had some issues. All right, cool. All right, I'll give it till four past the hour on my clock, then we'll get started. Um, is there anybody on the phone who did not announce themselves? All right, in that case, why don't I go ahead and get started four past the hour. Uh, okay, we did roll call. Just a reminder, uh, there are several AIs that are outstanding. Just try to get those and get a chance. Um, I'm gonna keep going unless someone would like to specifically say something about their outstanding AI. Okay, I see Sarah's adding some comments in there so you guys can read that later. So just a reminder, uh, the KubeCon, CNCF, Con, and EU, is coming up relatively soon. Uh, we do a doodle poll. As of right now, we have 14 people signed up for a face-to-face -face meeting. I believe that's probably more than enough to, to officially make it a, a, a quote, official meeting. Um, I will send out a, or create a doc or something for people to start jotting down ideas for potential topics in advance of the meeting. Uh, I think it's a little too soon to start doing that quite now, or quite yet, but just to give you a heads up there. Um, are there and just so you know, I did request a BOF session for us. It has not been confirmed yet, um, but uh, it is in the works. Hopefully we'll get that fairly soon. Are there any other questions or comments around the uh, KubeCon EU topic you want to bring up? 
All right, not hearing any, moving on. Just a little nagging reminder. We have 15 open PRs. Um, uh, you can see in the, in, in the notes here, three have Travis check errors, eight have unanswered questions, one needs to be signed, three need rebasing. Some of them meet multiple criteria in that list. So just a nagging reminder that if you opened up a PR, please go back and look at it so we could try to get some of these resolved. Granted, some of them may be blocked for other reasons other than uh, procedural things, like things like they're blocked by agreeing with a source or something like that. But in terms of being able to answer questions and stuff like that, try to get to those as soon as you can, um, just so we can move things along. And, it, it, and of course, things like rebasing and stuff you should be able to do now. And so with that, we can now jump into the meat of the agenda. So Sarah, uh, you want to talk about your PR 102? Yeah. I'm sorry, 101, sorry. Um, am I, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, go ahead. Okay, super. So I'm going to talk about the design goals that are now part of the spec first. Um, the, the key thing that I think we've all been aligned on is um, that we're, um, the goal is to allow services to be loosely coupled during development, deployed independently, and later can be connected to create new applications where those could all be done by different people and different entities. Um, and I think the key moving forward out of the discussions on Monday and Tuesday was the second paragraph where we um, figured out a way to talk about what we're trying to achieve without using some of these words that imply implementation to at least to some folks. So, um, so the first sentence I think is unchanged, which is the goal of the cloud specification is to define, define interoperability of event systems that allow services to produce or consume events where the producer and consumer can be developed and deployed independently. We chose to use the words producer and consumer because those are not in the spec and they, we felt they were generic terms and they wouldn't imply any definition and they seem to be had sort of generally accepted high level definitions. And then um, the second sentence, a producer can generate events before a consumer is listening and a consumer can express an interest in an event or class of events that is not yet being produced. It was a key, I think, expression of what many people in the working group would like to call a topic, but then seems to imply a particular implementation of PubSub or Kafka or a set of things that use topic, and then a number of other folks in the working group are consider triggers and event types and those types of things to be classifications and want to move towards those um, those types of formalized definitions. And so, but we all agree we want we're we're advocating for those different things in order to achieve these properties. So I think that that allows us to kind of frame what we're doing and distinguish it from asynchronous messaging. So I think um, one of the things that I've learned in working with these technologies over the last year is that when you say event in the industry, it can mean one of three things usually. One is any kind of asynchronous messaging. It's often called an event. And this is a specific kind of messaging where we're, where we're decoupling the actual getting something from source to destination from the event generation. The other type of event, which I think we all agree is um, a subset of what we're doing, is any time series data, right, particularly most often used with logging, is considered an event. You talk to a logging person, and that is exactly what an event is, time series data. And um, I think that this working group um, is looking at a, a lot, it wants to be inclusive of systems where things might not be ordered, time may not be a thing, and, um, and a lot of people feel time should be optional. And so that's like a completely different class of, um, or different concern. It's, it's overly specific to what we're talking about. So we tried to capture, like, what is the essence of the kind of eventing that we're talking about? And then um, lastly, the, the last paragraph um, in the design goal section is, I think, um, uh, just a little modified from before, which is to this end, the specification will include common metadata attributes of an event that facilitate interoperability, where the event does not contain any details about the consumer or transport that might be used to send the event. 
So in some ways it's restating the prior paragraph, but it's clarifying some of the things that we generally agreed to at some of, at many of our meetings. And the idea is that these three paragraphs help newcomers to the specification to understand, you know, what category of event you were talking about. So um, before we talk about non-goals, I'd love to um, get feedback about the design goals. Particularly from people who weren't involved in the Monday, Tuesday. You know, I think what you just described is, is perhaps the most succinct uh, description of what kind of events uh, Cloud Events is trying to describe. And most of the detail you just said uh, in describing this paragraph is not actually in the paragraph. Um, it might be useful not to have it there, um, but to have a more verbose uh, like, um, a way of describing all of those things that you just said um, that is maybe linked to from here or some things like, this is the succinct version. This is the, the concentrated uh, description of what we're going for. And here are pages describing sort of all of the different ramifications of this and the way it sort of bubbles out into the rest of the world in order to get a, a more complete sense of, of what you're trying to get through with this paragraph. Yeah, I like that. And I think that that could be um, like an add-on. I think we tried to keep this concise one because we wanted in the spec, um, but also we, fewer words are more likely to drive alignment. <laughs> um, and, um, and what you're suggesting is, is really consistent with having another, and you know, adding something maybe to the readme or a companion document. Yes, precisely. So Ben, is that something that you'd like to see part of this PR or, or as a follow-on PR? Just, um, uh, I, I really appreciate that specificity and laying out, you know, here are three different examples of different types of events and how they fall into this spec. Um, and I, I got great value from that. I just wanted to call it out. I don't think it needs to be part of this PR. I don't think it should be part of this paragraph. Um, but I think it will be incredibly valuable to, to uh, help orient people that are coming. Um, because the, I mean, the, the flip side of being concise, yes, it, it, it becomes easier to, to get everybody on board, but there's also so much more wiggle room and ambiguity uh, because there isn't sufficient um, sort of exploration of all of the different op uh, options. So, uh, no, not part of this PR, um, just the, it, that was really great and useful. I wanted to say so. Okay. Thanks, Hi, Sarah. I think this looks, um, I think this looks very helpful. It's concise and simple, and I think it will mitigate a lot of confusion uh, for, for newcomers. And I also appreciate what Ben said. Um, I know that there's discussion of an, a, an about section, and you know, if this in the future could link out to the about section where you could explain in more detail um, all the things that you just described, uh, I think that would be a great solution overall. I'll also throw in, I've been working on um, something that I just made public yesterday to sort of explain these concepts inside Google because we have lots of different messaging systems. <laughs> I run into this a lot. Um, yeah. um, so it might, if it's useful to folks, um, we can take some of the language from that. But I'll just put it in because it's, um, uh, it's related. Other thoughts? Any other comments, questions for Sarah? Before she rolls on to the next piece of text in PR. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. All right. So non-goals. Um, so these have just been ones that um, have come up in conversation. Uh, there may be more non-goals, um, but I think that those, those I'd suggest this be in another PR, but we can talk about that. So basically, um, the function, a lot of the stakeholders in this group are specifically focused on function as a service. And um, however, some systems don't even involve functions. You could trigger other things or invoke or your, your consumer should not be functions. So I wanted to particularly call out that the function build and invocation process in a fast system is outside of the scope of the specification. Also, um, many folks in this group are working on language specific runtime APIs. And we're, we're just saying that those are outside of the scope of this specification um, and may or may not be follow on work, but certainly um, many of us believe could be enabled or accelerated by the specification. And then um, there's been some discussion about um, the importance of figuring out some kind of authorization thing. Um, 
but the f- people who are advocating for that also agree that it is a we do not want to you know select a single identity or access control system we're aligned with the no king makers philosophy of cncf so we just wanted to call that out like that is not something we're doing here um and leaving the way open that we may need to deal with authorization um but that is um that is actually that's like potential follow-on work and um and sort of related to that i'm going to zoom up to the working group process where we took out um authorization because i think that that generated a lot of discussion and instead putting this placeholder identify like one of the things we will do is identify and resolve whatever else is needed for interoperability so um so we're kind of leaving the way open that we we need to have further discussions on how do we refine these goals in order to meet them and and streamline our conversations but that's as, as far as we got all right any questions on the changes to the readme meaning the working group process or to the non-goal section <laughs> Um, a quick comment. I, I put this in on the PR. I'm not sure if uh, Sarah's seen it yet, though. There's some, there's some legacy. There's like this uh, legacy status section in there that we added in right at the beginning of this effort, and I, I believe the roadmap and some of the design goals kind of conflict with that section. And for clarity's sake, I would recommend probably removing that, maybe within this PR or a near future one. Yeah, I, I had comment back on that, Austin. I was going to tell you that, um, or I mentioned there that as soon as this PR was merged, I was going to submit a PR to pretty much remove that section. Great. Yep. Yeah, I saw that comment and didn't have a chance to comment on it, and I'm aligned with that, and I think it can be a follow-on PR. Yeah. All right, any other questions or comments on what Sarah presented? I believe the rest of the changes in the PR are just simply typographical, just extra spaces type stuff. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Um, I know the outstanding rule is things have to be changed within like two days. I believe there may have been some minor changes done yesterday. Um, so if you have any concerns, don't feel like you've had a chance to fully digest this, please speak up. But I am going to ask if there's anybody who would object to adopting this, because I don't think it's gone through any substantial changes within like the last day, day and a half. So it's on the border for timeline. Or if you want to speak for someone else you think may want to review it before we merge it, that's fine too. I just, just, don't want to delay unnecessarily, but I don't want to force it either. So let me go ahead and ask, is there any objection then to adopting the PR? All right, not hearing any. Thank you guys very much. And thank you, Sarah, very much for taking the lead on, on the uh, offline calls on this one. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank All you, right. Sarah. Great job. All right, so the next topic, I think, is what is source. Now, um, and don't, we don't have to do it this way. This My initial idea when I was thinking about this on the agenda was I'm not sure how much we can get into on this particular call right now. And so I was kind of wondering what you guys thought about having additional meetings, the same way we did for the goals section, where a group of people go off and work on a proposal to bring back to the group. I was wondering what you guys thought about that process, rather than trying to hash through it right here, right now. Maybe we could uh, bundle also the event type and source into like the same discussion, because it's sort of correlated. Yeah, I, I think that, I, that's a, that is a good point, because I think there's some things, there's overlapping concerns in the um, all that sort of collective yeah, we, we, we had we, we had that. already. Uh, I think we had already touched on some of those aspects in the in the call in the calls this week, especially when we were talking about the class the class of events uh, and and basically the the fact that a classification is required for you to be able to subscribe to it. And uh, if we if we take if we do another round of discussions um, on that, I think we're going to get clarity. I think ultimately, um, what this touches on is that we have um, we have the source, we have the source ID, we have the source type, and then we have the event type, which means we have four qualifiers, 
and and the goal would be to rationalize all of those um, and see how many of these we really uh, need. The, I, I know that there are some people who are who believe that there should just be one. Um, there are some people who believe there, there should be three. Um, and we should um, try to figure out with all the people who are passionate about, you know, that classification about how many there really need to be. Right now there are four, but my personal taste is SP quantum. Yeah, and there's also the namespace one, which I'm still not clear about. Uh, the, the namespace one, I think we can go and add that as the fifth if you want. Um, um, th I think that's like okay. If the, if the source is namespaced and the event is namespaced, then so there's another third namespace. So yeah, the, the, so, so on that particular one, without know, going too much into the details, because that's a discussion I can probably also talk about for like half an hour. Um, I think there's a there's good reason to go and disambiguate the event all up. When you get an event in your hand, to have a clear notion that this comes from Azure or this comes from Google Cloud or this comes from AWS, having a clear indicator of whether what 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 system realm that event originates from, that gives you good scoping and understanding how you should interpret all the other fields. So I still find this notion of namespace as the, 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 the scoping for, you know, what kind of system realm does that come from still uh, very useful. Yeah, we won't solve it right now, but you know, what you just said was source because you said, where does it come from? And if the source has a quality, you know, so let's just table it to the source discussion because yes. it's yeah. uh, really. I have an idea. Um, this sort of came up in a, in a few different um, of the discussions, which is maybe what we have to first align on is what is the criteria by which an action in or out, required or optional. And um, I think that we'd all like to align on the required things before we go through a huge backlog of optional things. Um, and I think that there is some dissent on what some of the things that some people think are optional, other people think are required. And that ends up generating lots and lots of discussion. Um, and, uh, and then we also have this sort of language problem where we're, we have different implementations that lead us towards different um, words, right? That, that then, then cause confusion. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble catching most of your comment. It's, it's very faint and, and slightly blurry. Um, if, you, if you have a uh, closer mic, can you use that, that or maybe just, oh, oh, so much better, thank you. Okay, thank you for saying that. Um, so what I was suggesting is that we um, come up with some crisp criteria for what is in or out, right? Some people have proposed that this be a, set, a, a small set of use cases, right? Like, IoT and um, you know the uh, cloud service, you know, uh, you know the sort of AWS cloud, Google Cloud Functions kind of use cases, and um, I'll, AWS Lambda. Let me say because I know Amazon does lots of things. Google also does IoT, um, and then the like, the like, you need to be able to have a gateway, and we need to be able to support different protocols. Like there's a specific context where we, we think that this uh, specification is applicable. And then other, you know, we also had a whole conversation about user stories, like that maybe the user stories is the, if we can come up with a small set of user stories, then we can attack them one user story at a time, perhaps. And um, at the, I'm not like, believe it or not, I'm not a huge process wonk, but in this case, I think that we could um, align faster on the criteria than we could on the set of attributes. Well, so, and that might so, help us. So for the, uh, the user stories is something I'm going to have next week because I'm going to compile them. It would be great if I could, could get, get more feedback on the, the proposed set that I sent around to the mailing list than just uh, from IBM. Um, and, uh, and I hope they will help and drive it. In terms of what, what goes, what the, the attributes get included or not, I think there's a one of the criteria is uh, which of the attributes is actually useful for uh, the majority of uh, the people in the committee, which means, you know, what 
in, if, if, there's, if there's any doubt whether an attribute needs to be pres preserved or pro property needs to be preserved or not, um, we have a process to go and figure this out. So what I would suggest is that we first come up with a set of user stories or use cases or however we want to express them. And, and maybe we can have like the same kind of a couple of live meetings where a few of us get together and hash out, right? So that we have some alignment and word smithing in advance of the call next week. And then we first align on the ones that are where we think we could not implement those use cases unless we had these attributes, right? And anything that is not required for one of the use cases or stories then becomes optional, right? Yeah, I think it's also we need to think that the envelope or the context is not a replacement to the event data itself. So, yes. the, you know, you can have the use case by simply looking into the event. So the real question is, what do we take out of the event into sort of a generalized context? Right. So that may, that may lead us faster to the question of transport than, um, and we may bucket things that we believe these will, we have to first do the required use cases, and then we do the, I mean, the transport is going to, like, how does this get transported? It's going to be necessary for interoperability, right? I believe that even for optional fields, there still needs to be a majority need, which means uh, it, there, needs to be, uh, there needs to be majority consensus that a field that's optional is so important that you may occasionally leave it off for some use cases, but for a majority of the use cases, it's, it's, it's important enough to have it. Yeah, I mean, I do think, yeah, I mean, we talked about, like, Euron and I talked offline about time stamp, right? Like, that's, like, it may be optional in some cases, but, like, it's just really, really high value to when, if it covers multiple use cases, actually picking the same name. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd be aligned with that. Okay, so I think what I'm hearing is agreement to potentially have the working, this extra little working group go off and look at two different things. One is the combination of at least those four attributes, you know, source, event type, namespace, I can't remember what the other ones were, but then also potentially come up with some guiding principles for when we include or exclude properties or when we decide they're required versus optional and other things like that. Is, is that a fair uh, summary? Yeah, well, I, actually, I'm proposing, I think Clemens and I are both talking about like, let's first come up with the guiding principles slash criteria for, um, for deciding. And, um, and that may lead to uh, um, a companion proposal of the attributes that would support that. Um, but doing them as, as separate PRs, I think, then it, if we can align, like, if it becomes contentious, we can align on the criteria in the next meeting at least. Well, so I don't, I don't disagree with two separate PRs or pieces of work. I think that's fine. What, I would, what I'm a little nervous about is saying that we're going to serialize it because I don't think you necessarily have to get agreement on the, the guiding principles on when something is in or out before you start the discussion of how to reconcile what is source. So okay, that we can let the working group decide yeah. what they want to propose. So we get yeah. like, we can just say basically, you know, we have a certain amount of time and if certain things are contentious, then we won't align before Thursday. But yeah. if we do happen to align, we will propose attributes. Yep. That's fine. Okay, so now the biggest question. Did you also suggest a, a group split off to do the user stories or Clemens, are you just collecting that on your own and, and uh, I, uh, we'll propose, we'll send a PR or something? I, I, well, I've, I've, uh, I've sent out, I think 11 or 12 candidate uh, uh, statements. Um, I would l love to get some input from people. Um, if I don't get any further input um, until, well, end of the week, I'm gonna go and start probably condensing them on Monday and uh, turn them into uh, a, a section here for the document. Um, or in, the more input I get, which is either um, adding to those statements or saying my product does the following thing, so we basically can get some ref counts on them. Um, that, those will, that will help me to solidify that the user stories are really user stories. I mean, I have, as you see on the, in the, the email that I sent, um, already have support for, for it from multiple Microsoft products if I, if I look at the our services that we run. Um, but that should not be sufficient. And so even if you think you're, so this is for everybody on the call, if you, uh, even if you think that your um, contribution would be redundant, um, you should not think of them as, as being redundant but helpful. So um, I would appreciate a response from everybody. 
Thank you. Can we incorporate things from the serverless white paper? Because I think we've had uh, use cases over there as well. Keep it, keep it as, keep it as. I mean, the uh, I think the candidate things are a template of of this, the, how short I want. That I'm thinking about the statements. So. Um, so yeah, I think it would be a good idea. You know, if you want to like review the white paper and see if there's anything that is critical. Uh, but I love the idea of like. Let's try to come up with a crisp um, con condensation of that, right? So we, we want to have this as short as, as possible in order to express the use cases that are critical. Yeah, feel free to write three pages of footnotes, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but keep the statements short, please. Yeah, but yeah, keep in mind, this isn't you know, the only time we're going to get a chance to add things to this, right? The list, I assume, will probably grow slightly over time. So, which is so, so I, Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, I have a question. So um, last time I presented a use case, I think, you know, we said there is a, there's a place on the GitHub place for us to put in that use case. Is that the way, is that the place to put, put it or should Yeah, so I think to, re to review um, Clement's user stories and see if those capture enough um, detail to cover your use case. And if they don't, suggest an addition. Yes. Or multiple editions. Could you all paste the link to that, to that group so people can look at that from the notes? Uh, that's an email that I sent to the, to the, to the mailing list. But you, can, but you can still link to the mailing list from the uh, Yeah, I think if you can just add that. Just maybe. so people have an easy way to go find it. Oh. Right. Okay, so while well, someone finds that link, um, do I have a volunteer who would like to organize and get this meeting going. So I'm happy to facilitate the meeting at the same time as we did this past week, okay. which would be like 8 a.m. Pacific, Monday, Tuesday. Okay. Um, you, Sarah. Where can I find that reference for that meeting on Monday, 8 a.m.? Is that in the, I just missed it in the, uh, in the notes? So that way we would meet in the same Zoom location that okay. this meeting meets in. Got it, got it, so 8 a.m., great. Thank you, Sarah. So, so Sarah is a meeting the I mean the same um what's the link to the meeting? Sorry, I missed the last week's meeting. Yeah, so it would be at the same at this same call virtual meeting location at eight AM Pacific on Monday and Tuesday. And the idea is that we would you can you can participate asynchronously and, and in fact we it would be really, really helpful if in advance if Today, tomorrow, over the weekend, whenever people have time to add in to um, you know the uh, the discussion about your use cases, so that we have um, collected as much as possible before that meeting, and then we'll have notes after the meeting, so that people who can't um, come at that time can part participate asynchronously. And just so you guys know, I did try to put the meeting minutes into the same doc here. So you guys can read it if you uh, missed the call. So to so call in the meeting is the same link as, uh, I mean, put into uh, uh, the meeting, what's that? Uh, yes. A work yes. group, no, just click that on the same. Yeah, link. it's the same Zoom meeting, yes. Okay, I see. Just, just 8 a.m. Pacific on Monday and Tuesday. Is there any way we can move this to 9 a.m.? That, that's up to you guys. Yeah, Sarah, um, is it possible? So, um, I have to look at my calendar, but um, I will, I'll move one of the meetings to 9 a.m. I, I, I will note that the CNCF talk meeting is at 8 a.m. on Tuesday. <laughs> or, or if um, somebody else is sure they're available at 9 a.m. on one of those days. <laughs> Maybe we should yeah. say 9 a.m. Monday and 8 a.m. Tuesday. Yeah, 9 a.m. will be, Better. Okay, so 9 a.m. Monday, 8 a.m. Tuesday, Pacific time, that is. And Clemens, can you make those times? Uh, yeah. So that if I don't? Next okay, so if, if I have a conflict on Monday, then you can facilitate the Monday meeting? Yeah, don't worry, we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, super. Somebody will facilitate yes. the Monday meeting. Yep. Great. All right. Actually, Tuesday 8 a.m. is a TOC meeting. No, no. Right. But that, yeah, Tuesday at 8 a.m. is the TOC meeting. Yeah, so maybe so we should flip it. 
Hold on. And have Tuesday see. 9 a.m., Monday 8 a.m. That okay. is true. Okay. So, okay. Hold on. So that, we're agreeing to 8 a.m. Monday, 9 a.m. Tuesday. Is that what I'm hearing? Yep. Any objection to that? Done. All right, cool. Thank you, guys. Before we move on, I'm, not, I'm hesitant to ask, but I got to do it. Before we move on, are there any other sort of clarifying questions people have relative to this topic? Otherwise, save any deep discussions for the calls on Monday and Tuesday. But just one last chance for someone to speak up in case they may not be able to make it. All right, cool. In that case, um, a fair number of the PRs that are out there, as I said, have a little bit of work that needs to be done, but I did think there was one that we might be able to discuss right now because it has been untouched in a while and uncommented, and it's adding a log level to the attributes. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember who this person is. Let me just see. Do, 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 do. Malhar, are you on the car call? Okay, anyway, you guys can, it's fairly short. They just wanted to add a logging level, a log level attribute, where it has to be debug, info, warning, error, or fatal for value, and it is optional. I was wondering if this is something you guys wanted to discuss at this point in time, since it has been uncommented for quite a while. So, so I think, it, like, this is, like, this is just my opinion. It might make more sense to align on what we think the criteria should be for when an attribute is in or out before we decide on this. Um, I, 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 I'm a little hesitant to, to block all forward progress on that, but if people want to, I, I'm okay with it. I just, like I said, I thought since this one has been basically uncommented on for a while, it may be People could look at it independently of those criteria being defined, but if enough of the group want to wait, I'm okay with that too. But it's a it, this is this is a log entry, and I can think of very very many events that are not log entries. No, it's That's not hard. about log. Uh, it's not about log entry. Uh, we have such uh, we have that attribute in uh, Nucleo that allows us to flag that we essentially want to uh, create debugging info across the entire life cycle of the event. So but, uh, but how, how we, is we can so turn it on and off or change the logging level while things uh, you know, mm -hmm. are in production. Yeah, so, so why, if this is specific to your solution, how, why I, I don't think, by the way, it's specific. I think that Lambda has something similar so uh, log, log level is not necessarily specific to a solution. Um, we see it in different scenarios as well, but it's when we're crossing different solutions and trying to have some sort of some compliance between the different types of logs. And that's where we, we end up using log level. We see other people use it as well. Um, so, I'll comment on this particular item. I just haven't done it yet. Okay, so- It's like I, verbosity level of the reporting of the sort of end-to-end uh, -end system. So yeah, you're I on? I understand, uh, but it's, it, it said, it's, um, see my objection here is, that it it even says log, and so it is it is it is apparently related to a logging uh, to to logging. This if you do if you use this for if you use events for um, I don't know uh, condition monitoring. Uh, you're Clemson, you're confusing two things. It's, it doesn't say anything about the fact that the event has something to with, do with logs. It's the logging of the end to end uh, sort of messaging system or eventing system. Yeah, but but why would you trigger that with an untrusted item that runs through your system? No, like, yeah, let's assume you're running an aspect-oriented thing, right? It's kind of crossing, a, a cutting across everything. I, this is just a piece of that domain. It's not the whole domain. Yeah, I I have to agree with Flims here. the The idea, for example, that I could send an event to Microsoft Event Grid, which would trigger Microsoft Event Grid's internal logging level. Uh, before going to something else is just, it kind of feels very, very weird. So I don't, I, so I, I want to clarify something. This my interpretation of this is not, this is telling it what logging verbosity should be engaged. I, I'm interpreting this text here as saying this event was generated because of this logging level. I think there are two different things. Uh, so that, you can uh, interpret this. The way we, we interpret it is what is my uh, desired logging level. It doesn't necessarily mean that someone have to respect that, but 
let's assume I'm, I'm throwing an event and uh, I want to uh, start looking at why things fail. I, can sort of, I don't want to do it necessarily on a, all the type of events because certain event has failed. So I, I want to be able, for, you know, for example, think about serverless uh, framework when you're uh, throwing some, a call into the, the function and you want to test this specific call because all the others pass and I want to be able to, uh, I don't want, I have system in, in production. I don't want to turn the bug level on all the different types of events that go into the system. I want to turn it to a specific system, a specific event seem yeah, to be I failing. But again, it may be a, something that people don't see a lot of value in. We, we definitely see a lot of value. In. I, I, find this, I, I find this rather, this is unusual. I think that's a, a very, uh, and I'm not sure I have seen this at all ever. Um, you, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to you trying to control the diagnostics pipeline of infrastructure that you don't own using a left message level flag. That's something that I so I can tell you that flag if that shows up in our um, uh, in our system. Uh, we would um, at best ignore it. We would probably reject the message because sure, that's that, may that makes sense. But that flag doesn't necessarily have to come from the origin. It can come from sort of the intermediate uh, level. Yeah, but but it's this is this is something that this is something that is so unusual that I'm not sure this belongs in the standard. Right. Like, I, I can't. I can't see. I can't see any system in Microsoft observing that flag. That, so I think okay. that, um, I don't have uh, strong opinions about it. Well, I'm I think just... that it's also, um, at minimum, we need to clarify that this is not, um, this is not really a property of the event as I'm hearing it, right? This is not like, uh, like somebody said that, like there was a, a confusion about, is this specific to the event is a log event versus any event, like I am interested in this particular um, event, event type or what, how, class of events that, um, that I want to apply logging to. So it seems like it's, it doesn't belong with the event specification, but rather some other layer that would be in the event systems, right? Yes, yeah, so, right. I, 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 I'm agreeing sorry. that it shouldn't be in the spec and it should really be, if we have extensions at some point, we could propose this as an extension uh, that's just so that there'd be commonality for people who want to adopt that extension. And we do have extensions. We have a PR about it too. Yeah, so it seems like there's two things here. One, we need clarity. Is this some sort of flag that it tells the system whether to turn on debugging or not? Or is it a property of the event itself, meaning this thing was generated as a logging message type of thing? We need that level of clarity. And then um, what I'm hearing is almost either way, <laughs> it's either no, not in our spec, because we don't want to control the infrastructure from outside, or it may be an extension if, if it falls into the other category. That's what I'm hearing so far. So it sounds like, um, you're on maybe you could take the AI to respond back to the gentleman who opened this up and ask him for clarity on what exactly he was proposing this thing be. And then based yeah. on that, we could, we could recommend the next steps. Yeah, I don't know actually who, who did it. Maybe it's me, but uh, I, I'm, no, I'm it that wasn't consensus you. that you sort of outlined here, which first it's, it's, uh, it's, a first, it's uh, the auditing thing, not, it doesn't say anything about the event itself. And second, that it's optional or extension at best. So we yeah. don't have to have it here. All right, so maybe you can comment in the PR and they get asked for that clarity first, then we can figure out the next steps. That's actually sure. one of the reasons why I wanted to bring it up because I actually did not think we we're gonna agree get agreement on this. <laughs> I figured it was gonna cause some 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 uh some some chatter and I wanted to get that chatter out of the way since no one was commenting on the PR. So I appreciate you guys taking or indulging me on that. Yeah, and, and if it's to set a log level in some uh, receiving consumer system, then that I would expect that would be a security issue as well uh, for an attack vector. Yep, I would agree. All right, so thank you. It would be great to capture that concern in the PR if somebody wouldn't mind commenting on it. I'll add that comment in. Excellent, thank you. And so with that, just a reminder, please do look at the open PRs and comment on that. Um, 
we shouldn't necessarily have to wait until these phone calls to, to remind people to comment. Because as I said, that one should have been an easy one for people to, to complain about. I thought, I thought it was going to generate a lot of talk like that. Hey, so hey Doug, that, Doug yeah. I've got a, a few thoughts I want to run by you and everyone else. Um, first off, in the specification, there is this extensions property where we could test out experimental uh, attributes um, and see, you know, the market will tell us what they like and, and what they don't like. And we could, and that hopefully will help us figure out what to add in to the core specification over time. Um, just in case anyone wasn't aware of that. Additionally, I believe that we need to get this thing to version 0.1. And at this time, should we be focused on adding more attributes or just settling on the, the, the few minimum amount of attributes that we need to actually get a version of this out the door? Comments before I state mine? <laughs> Um, I'll, I'm certainly for focusing on what we got um, because I think we already have too many and then we can go and see how, where we put expansions and additions for certain use cases and I think having them as extensions first and then uh, for extensions to graduate into um, uh, well, main proper properties, I don't know how to call those, um, I think that's a, that would be a good, a good thing. Um, I think w the core set that we have that we have right now um, that's enough uh, enough debate. Uh, let's get that debate out of the way and uh, ship an initial set, and then we can go and expand. That's my opinion. Yeah, and I'd like to build on that one too. I think um, I would like to be able to have a phase where we're focused on just the narrow use cases, and then even like look at all the properties and say, is there anything we can cut? And before we do that purge, I'd like to not let a whole bunch of new things in. I agree. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. And, but at the same time, in fairness to people who do think that they have an idea for an attribute that should be part of the core immediately, I think we do at least need to have an initial discussion. And, if it, and even if the outcome of the discussion is interesting, but let's defer it and move it into extensions for now, I think that's a valid outcome. But in fairness to people, we probably do at least need to have an initial conversation about any proposal put forward. We can't just summarily ignore them. For, for these types of uh, uh, PRs, can we tag them as potential extensions and that way we can at least bucket them? Definitely, but we have to have, have that initial discussion. Yep, agreed. I'm really looking forward to walking through all of the use cases and identifying which attributes are not necessary for maybe any or at least most of them. Yeah, and just, to, and just to follow up what Mark was saying there, if you come across, like for example, this PR or this attribute where you think it's, it's, it should be at best pushed out as an extension, comment on that inside the PR. And if enough people say, yes, let's talk about this later or let's defer this or put it as an extension or something like that, that then becomes the proposal that we can very quickly, in essence, vote on during one of our phone calls. And we can move it very quickly. We don't have necessarily have to go into a deep discussion on the calls. but. Get, that, get those comments into the PR in terms of what you want to see the resolution be for that particular issue. For, for the user stories and, and use cases um, uh, thing, I have one, one more request that I'm just thinking about based on that uh, comment. Um, and that is, if you're using, so there are a few companies here which are building um, infrastructure routing, event routing infrastructure from the ground up, but I don't think everybody does that. So some of you will use existing stuff um, that is out there in open source. Um, if you do that, it would be very interesting to um, also learn about what you're using today. That would be very helpful just for me to kind of get an understanding what the lay of the land here is. Thank you. All right. All right. I think we sort of beat this log level at PR to death. So please, everybody comment in there. Before I forget, I did want to make one comment back on Sarah's PR 101 because um, we talked about the text changes itself, but we, didn't we did not necessarily talk about the process comment that she had in there. And I wanted just to draw people's attention to it to make it clear to everybody that the PR is not the end of the road. In particular, with Clemens taking the AI to do the user stories and, and stuff like that, I wanted, people, I wanted people to be clear that there is some additional work that we agreed to work on, like create, writing up personas, user stories, prioritizing those user stories, and then making sure that all the attributes that we add in the future relate back to those user stories to make sure we don't get scope creep and stuff like that. So I just wanted to make sure people are aware of that comment in there and, and it wasn't missed in our discussions. Okay.
it might be helpful to put some of those use cases or user stories in our roadmap too, maybe just to help rein in focus. I'll leave that up to Clemens to figure out the best way to PR it and get that into our set of documentation. Cool. All right. All right. With that, as I said, I don't think we have any other PRs available to actually talk about. You can see down here, there's a whole bunch of them that have little comments that need to be made or little fixes that need to be made. Mark, would you be okay with bringing up that topic we talked about last week at the uh, conference relative to interrupt? Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, at the Open Source Leadership Summit, uh, Austin, uh, Doug, and myself got together and we were just chatting. And we talked about at some point we'd like to see uh, implementations have have an interoper interoperability uh, between them. The there's an open source project that we uh, put out called Dispatch, which is a framework uh, for uh, doing functions. And as part of that, we've actually implemented part of the uh, Cloud Event spec. I we know that it's not a full specification yet, but it was something that we felt was a directional that we wanted to at least start that implementation with a uh, with cloud events. So this is an open discussion around uh, when are people going to be implementing uh, something around cloud events and then are there things that we can do to start looking at the interoperability of these services to make sure that we have a spec that actually works in practice as opposed to just in theory. I'm a big fan of uh, us trying to starting to uh, um, put some heads together in terms of dev work and uh, trying to make things interop. Um, and so we're we're, we're um, um, obviously always keeping an eye on how practical the the specification is. So we're playing um, and uh, you know, making one thing and making another thing talk together would be great. I think one the thing we're missing. Um, so if we go in and say we're going to do a, an interop group that kind of explores how to go and make things plug, um, I think I'm a fan of just, you know, implementing, writing some code first and seeing how things work best and then come back from that code and, uh, um, and then write down what you did. So starting, so we, I think of us here defining the, the properties more or less in the abstract. So it works for many different you know, transport scenarios. And that we then probably in the first stab at implementation, go and do something around HTTP. That's also why I wrote that HTTP straw man in the, uh, um, as an issue up as an, ex as an um, example. Um, and then we can probably get together and see how we can go and hack something together that's an, a, a proper HTTP mapping and then come out back from that group and propose that as the, the first binding, the first transport binding being HTTP. So we would be game to play in that, Microsoft. Yeah, so for that, we, we do need a, a definition for, um, you know, all the headers. We need to definition to the mapping of those headers to the protocol. And we may need some definition of the API semantics. Yep. So Mark, what would be your recommendation in terms of next step here? Is it still sort of in the thinking stage or do you want to actually take some next, act, some concrete actionable next step? That's a good question. I think we need, in order to talk about interoperability, we need more than one implementation. Uh, perhaps what would, make sense is to have some subset of people look at, are there open source projects that we could convert to emit or consume cloud events? And some of my team is probably up to uh, helping to implement that in order to show that they are interoperable. Yep. We are open to do a um, um, version of Nucleo that supports that. So, uh, and, and you're on. We, we've we've also talked in the past about uh, having dispatch support Nucleo as well. Yep. So, should we look at possibly seeing who would like to participate in a in a side group discussion on sort of putting together some of the uh, material yep. needed to make this happen? 
So, so before right. that, I, I'm also for, is this implementation um, about um, the event producer or event consumer or both? Or is it like a service platform? So what is this open source we are trying to, um, the open source project we are trying to work on? I guess my, my ultimate goal is that anything, any service should be looking at cloud events as a way to communicate with other services, yeah. right? In which case it's producer and consumer, or even the, you know, in the case of dispatch, using it as the middleware bus to move thing, move events between services. Yeah, I think of this. I think of this as a all interoperability projects have plugfests, yes. of sort where where uh, you come with whatever you got, and then you make sure that it all works works together. And I think we can go and um, I would probably stage this and have first a side group discussion to see, hey, we need to have to, to do communication. We obviously need to have a protocol choice, and then we need to go and see what the protocol, what the base protocol is going to look like. Um, for, for the purposes of trying things out, not for the purposes of really writing a normative document in the beginning. Um, and then uh, go back and, and figure out how you're going to go and plug this in your products. And then we can figure out a, a date and time and location to uh, figure out um, how we can go and plug stuff together that could also be virtual, but that's kind of the progression that I think it makes sense. Right. So since we're running low on time, Mark, would you take the action item to set up like a doodle poll or something to see who would be interested in and, and what time they'd be able to meet in the upcoming days or weeks to, to have a discussion about this? Yep, will do. Excellent, thank you very much. And with that, I believe we don't have time to start anything deep. So let me, before I adjourn, uh, go back to the agenda uh, and uh, the list of attendees just to miss some, because I think I missed some people. Um, Edith, are you there? Eat it? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, hold on. My cursor's in the wrong spot here. Uh, Garish? Yeah, hey, I'm here. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Louie? Yep, I'm here. David Lyle? Yeah, this is David. Okay. Is there anybody on the call who is not who does not have an asterisk next to their name in the attendee list? All right, cool. With three minutes left, is there any other quick topics someone would like to bring up since we are this technically is, at the end of the agenda? This is Rachel. I need to apologize to everyone whose name I continue to miss call, especially your own. <laughs> I'm with you. I, I don't just misspell, I mispronounce, so I'm with you. All right, any other topic? All right, in that case, oh, I'm sorry, Kathy, were you gonna say something? Yeah, uh, I'm thinking, you know, probably, you know, um, people have some use cases. Uh, I'm thinking maybe we should add use cases. That, is there centralized places for to add those use cases? Yes, and we then, have a use case doc. Go ahead and just submit a pull request to add more to it. Okay, okay. And then, thank you. And then of course, once Clemens gets his PR in there with the user stories, you can obviously mm -hmm. add more to that by submitting a PR once his PR goes in. Okay, so there is a use, call, use case document yes yes okay. there is yes okay yeah. i'll check it out thank you okay thank you all right yeah, it's, it's linked it, the email is linked from these nodes uh now i think yeah that's for your user story one right yep, yep. yes right and, and so you have all, all of you have that as an email if you were subscribed to the mail oh right okay all right okay. cool great. all right <clears throat> any other last 30 second topics All right, with that, I believe we're done. Thank you guys very much. We'll talk next week. Or I'm sorry, some of us on Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Bye, Thank everybody. You, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, bye. Bye.